Hi everybody, it's Nicole. I'm here again today with another video for the Vicky Booten design team. Today I'm talking about using your leftovers or making the most of your mess. So I'm actually just playing with some art crayons here. I have a pink and a red of Vicky's art crayons. I'm just watering it down with, with some water, obviously. And I'm just going to honestly play with some of the watercolor here on my uh, foundations cardstock. And when I started this project, I wasn't really sure where I was going, but I knew that I wanted to make an entire background um, with different colors of art crayons and then make something from it. So I'm doing the kissing technique here. I'm going to do some, as you can see, some droplets. I'm going to try to move some of that paint around just with some extra water. Um, I'm trying to get rid of some of those harsher lines. So I'm just trying to blend that out a little bit. So I'm just going to water that down and move things around and let it dry. Because I want to add several different colors, I'm going to use my heat gun here just to kind of set this paint, um, as you can see, and just get that dry before I add the next color because I don't want things to like really melt together or you'll just get a big kind of brown uh, yucky mess. So I'm just going to dry that. I do dry both the front and the back side. If I had enough time or patience, um, I would actually run this through a laminator in between each just to really make sure things are flat. But at any rate, I'm going to move on now with a kind of a peachy color from the neutral art crayon set. And I'm just doing some splatters and some really light taps, not quite as much as the pink, but just to bring in a, a little bit of a different kind of color. I feel like this peach color is a little bit pinkish as well. So it really goes well with the pink tones. And so I'm just going to add again, just you can barely see it here um, on on camera, but you can see the, it a little, a little bit later on. So once I'm done with that, I'm also going to dry that color in between. Now I want to add in some yellow. I'm going to also mix in some orange just to soften the yellow a bit so it's not quite so vibrant. It's a pretty bright yellow color. I'm going to start with some water droplets and then just slightly kind of move some of that paint around. I'm not going to do the kissing technique with this only because it will really deposit a lot of color and I want pink to be kind of the main focus. So I'm just going to use my paintbrush to really kind of just smooth out some of the larger paint splatters that I have there and again I'm going to set this with my heat tool uh, to dry so you can really kind of start to see the different variations of color with the art crayons um, and it is a little bit of a hot mess I'll be honest at this point because that one pink area there on the right is pretty large but for what I want to do this will actually be really perfect so if you're looking to kind of play around with techniques and try and, and figure things out this is the kind of what project you want to do. So I'm going to grab one of Vicky's stencils next and I want to add some more color. So I'm going to use um, that kind of orangey color with that peach mixed together to create a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit darker peach color with the orange with my stencil. And with the stencil brush, you can see it just adds that nice kind of color into the white area. I am overlapping onto the pink slightly and I'm not really being clean with this. I'm just adding it randomly in different spots, overlapping with the different colors of the art crayon just to create like a really mixed media feel, obviously. I wanna add some black splatters just to make it things a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna add just a few light black splatters, not a lot, I don't want it to be super black. Um, I'm gonna let that sit a few minutes and, and slightly air dry it with the heat gun. Um, and then I'm gonna roll it off and dab with my paper towel. I don't really want the black to be super, super, super dark. I'm okay with it if it's actually a little bit just more dark gray. Um, but I like how it turns out. You can see it kind of melts a little bit into the paper there. So now I've taken my paper towel and dried it off. The one thing I thought I would do is add some of the gold uh, paste here to the background. I'm just going to water that down. Uh, you don't need a lot. A little bit of this does go a really long way. And I thought the gold would mix really nicely with that peachy yellow situation that, of colors that I'd use. So I'm just going to use paint splatters for this just to add a slight... Just another texture and little pops of the gold glimmer. Um, I'm not going to use a ton of that, but now that I have it done, I let it dry. I did run it through my laminator, um, and I also, as you can see, run it through my silhouette to cut out these really basic flower shapes. And the thing is, when you're playing around with the mixed media and you're not really sure you like how it's turned out, or you're just playing around to, for fun, like I did here, um, it's a really great thing to use to, to punch out with a punch or a die cut from a die cut machine as I've done here. So you can see I made some really pretty simple uh, flower shapes just from kind of fooling around. Altogether, that would have been much too much for a background, at least for my liking. But I think when you punch it out or cut it into a smaller shape like this one here, you can see it's, it's kind of really fun like your own pattern paper. So 
Um, I've cut this with my silhouette. You could absolutely, like I said, do this with a punch as well. But this gives you, I find with the digital cutter, you have the ability to really size things and have things match a little more. Um, so that's why I'm a digital cutter fan. But I mean, everybody has their own ideas. So I'm just going to layer these flowers here. I'm curling the edges with my pencil and I'm going to layer it with the foam tape just to give the paper some dimension. And then I'm going to add them around the edges of my photos here. I am going to cover up the book shape because I don't feel like it really goes with my photos. But the blue turquoise green background there is a really nice space. So I thought that would be a nice contrast to the pink and the gold and the yellow that I have here in the flowers. And I'm really just honestly adding a lot of foam tape behind each of the flowers. I'm going to start with the larger ones and I will move my pictures a couple times. Um, but I'm going to start with the larger ones and really just kind of cover up that top area and then slowly scatter my flowers in another way around my page. Um, sometimes your cutter doesn't cut the car cardstock very well, so you do have to trim off any little extras there. But curling the edges of the flowers with the pencil gives it a lot of nice dimension. You could obviously layer together some of these smaller flowers over top of the larger ones. Um, but I found because my colors were all kind of the same that when I initially thought I would layer some of these flowers together, you really didn't see all the pattern. It wasn't, you kind of missed, it was all just too much the same. So I will fill in the flowers later, but it just won't be with um, the same mixed media background. I think if you did it the same thing in a contrasting color, it might work a little bit better. Um, but I, you know, didn't obviously do it with this one here. So I think I'm pretty good with the larger flowers and now I'm working my way down to these smaller ones here. Really just trying to fill in that top area and I realized I needed to bring in some additional colors so I'm going to use a good old staple from the Storyteller collection and this rainbow stripe I love so I'm just going to add a little bit of a strip across the top just to, to be honest to cover up a bit of that harsher book line. Um, but also to bring just a little bit more pop of color across the top and bring some of that pink kind of into the mix. So I'm going to continue on with my flowers, staggering them out. I'm really trying to make sure I don't have too much that are all of the one kind of color section from my paper. So I don't want to have too much of that dark pink color and too much of the yellowy gold. I'm trying to mix a lot of that up together. Foam tape is a really good thing to use for something like this because you can rip it off and tear it to the size you need too. I, I use this big roll from Amazon and I think it, it's probably kind of expensive when you look at the sticker but when you consider how far this uh, tape goes it goes pretty pretty far. So I'm now just slowly adding those tinier flowers in and I'm just really bringing them scattering them in, in a little more so it's not all quite so condensed and I think I'm nearing the end here of where I want to put all my different flower pieces. So I kind of like how that came together I decided I wanted some leaves, so I'm going to use my circle punch with this really fun mossy green color. And I'm just going to make some leaves by punching it out with my circle punch. I'm using a one and a half and a two inch circle punch. So I have kind of like two different sizes of leaves. And then I'm going to kind of put two of those leaves together to make a bit of a leaf cluster. And then tuck those in in some of those overlapping areas. So you can kind of still see pieces of the book popping through. Um, and or pieces of a gap in between the photo and the and the flower so I'm going to use that to kind of camouflage some of those areas and it's also going to bring in some more color uh, and I do find that this green matches really nicely with the gold as well so it's kind of a nice uh, color match so I'm going to again I'm going to use foam probably for this whole layout for all the adhesive I'm just pinching these together stapling and then using foam to stick that in behind to kind of clean up all those empty areas. So it's a nice way to like bring in more color, but really camouflage where things are. So I kind of like how this is turning out so far. Um, I have a couple more leaves I want to make use of. So I'm just going to add some single ones here in just to hide again, more of that open area. And so now I'm trying to decide if I need to do anything more with the flowers. Again, I thought about here punching out some of the rest of the design that's left onto the mat with my circle punches. But I, I do one here and you'll see it's just kind of all too much the same color. Um, it's not enough variation. So I decided to go into my scrap pile from Storyteller and just punch out some of the coordinating colors that the art crayons go with. So I'm going to punch out some of the yellow. Um, I think there's like a bit of a purpley red that I'm going to punch as well as that corally orange kind of color. 
Um, and then I'm going to use those as the center of my flowers. So I'm going to use foam as well to stick those down. And I'm trying to alternate the colors with the sizes so they're not all the same center for the size of the flower, if that makes sense. So not all the large flowers have purple centers. Some will have yellow and and at the end, the small ones will all have the coral. But I'm trying to kind of distribute that around. And I really like it because it, it brings the mixed media together with the pattern paper because I think some people have a hard time trying to figure out where you put your mixed media in with all the pattern paper. And often people don't use pattern paper when they use mixed media. They don't they use a lot of embellishments or stickers, but they don't add a lot of paper. But you really can still incorporate a lot of different papers from a collection or a paper pad into a project that you have a lot of mixed media in. So in this case, this is a really, I think, a pretty good example of that where I am incorporating paper, actually mixed media, probably into the paper. So now I think I have most of my flowers situated where I want them. I have the centers together. And so now I'm just really going to add a simple title and a few embellishments because there's so many flowers going on. I don't really want to add too much. So I'm going to use some of these puffy stickers and some leftover stickers I have here from Storyteller that I like. I'll layer a few here onto the bottom edge of my photo. And then um, again with my title. And I'm not going to add a whole lot of I don't add a lot of journaling. Someone had asked me a question a few weeks ago about adding journaling to a page. I don't really add a lot of journaling. That's just, I'm kind of a quiet, private person when it comes to that stuff. Um, but there's definitely room for that if you decide you wanted to do a page like this. There's lots of room on the bottom there that you could add in some strict journaling or journaling. So I decided Storyteller was a nicer title for this. Um, and it kind of just filled things in a little bit more. I liked how that looked, so I decided to put that in instead of the currently and now I'm just really trying to find some embellishments to kind of fill in a few little gaps I'm not going to add a ton to this like I said because I have all those flowers going on but I thought all these little circle puffy stickers would be good to fill in just some of those remaining little areas that just need a little bit of extra something so in between some of these flower clusters just along the edge I'm trying to pick some of the puffy dots that will add just little tiny pieces of color into those kind of open areas um, thought about what color I want to put in the center of the small flowers and so I'm just searching through my scraps you can see I keep scraps of all different sizes I do not throw a lot of scraps away and I decided that I would use this yellow um, just to add a little bit more of that yellow color that I had in the background so I'm going to pop those up all small here onto the small flowers to add a center I thought about using like an enamel dot or something in the middle, but they were just too large, those small flowers, to do that. So I had to go with my tiny little half inch circle punch. Circle punches will go a long, long way. All right, so from here, I don't have a whole lot more I want to do. I'm just making sure all my flowers are stuck down. I am going to add some black uh, mist to the back of my page just to bring in a little more of that black color. Um, so here is a close-up of that those mixed media flowers. I really just love how these turned out. This is kind of my total style of mixed media. Not a whole background, but little bits and pieces that you can incorporate into a layout. So I hope you've enjoyed this one today. I will see you again next week. Have a good time playing with your mixed media products. Bye-bye.